Hello there. Let's have a quick review of chapter 9 that is environment and development. Now often what happens is in our pursuit for one of these we end up harming the other. So in this unit we'll be looking at what are the different global environmental problems especially with relation to pollution. We'll be looking at what is economic development and environmental degradation and why they go hand in hand. Then we'll look at the international trade and role of multinational companies in degradation of environment. So these are the different topics that we'll be dealing with in this review video. Now when we see global environmental pollution it is caused by all the countries. So the countries have been divided by UN based on their economic status, based on their GDP, their industrialization, their per capita income and many other factors into developed and developing countries. Now developed countries say that developing countries are causing the problem and developing countries say no no it's the developed countries which are adding on to the pollution. So let us see how each one of them is contributing. Developed countries are adding on to pollution by their rampant industrialization and urbanization. All the technology that they use, all the appliances that they use on a regular basis is adding on to pollution, is adding on to resource depletion. On the other hand, developing countries' main problem is overpopulation. When there's too much of population in a small piece of land, it leads to cutting of forests, that is deforestation, it leads to overgrazing, it leads to overuse of water resources. And then when these countries want to, you know, have accelerated development, they suddenly escalate their industrialization. They have sudden industrialization to improve their economy. That again leads to a host of environmental problems. So both developing as well as developed countries do add on to the greenhouse gases, do add on to the greenhouse gas emissions. They do leave a carbon footprint. But then what happens is in the world, they keep blaming each other for the majority of the environmental pollution. So we know that rich countries are responsible for two thirds of the carbon that is entering into that has entered into the atmosphere since 1850 because they were having industries and all set up much before the developing nations. The greenhouse gases have reduced as per what they say is it should be reduced as per the targets of the intergovernmental panel on climate change that is IPCC. So what they say is there should be an absolute reduction every country has to reduce. On the other hand what the developing countries say is that you know we have just started the race we have just entered the rat race and you're not letting us uh, get developed you're putting a big block of controlling the emissions right away, which is not fair. So this is the continuous debate that is happening between developed and developing countries as to who is having more emissions, who should be taking a major role in controlling the emissions. So as far as, far as the poor countries, the developing countries are concerned, they want the emissions per head to be considered as standard. That is not just the current emissions. What they say is that Till now, historically also, there have been a lot of emissions. There has been a cumulative buildup because of the developed countries. And so, both need to uh, pull up their socks and both need to control the total greenhouse emissions. Ultimately, the only solution for this is a mutual cooperation. We need to have mutual cooperation between the developed and the develop developing countries for sustainable development. So, when we see the economic development and environmental degradation. Environmental degradation, you all know about it. It is when the environment is, you know, uh, ge getting degraded, it is getting destroyed little by little. Economic development is related to improving the standard of living of a particular nation. So, improving the economic health of a particular nation. Now, in 1992, at the Earth Summit, Earth Summit was conducted in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And this is actually, the summit is, or this conference is called as the UN Conference on Environment and Development, that is UNCED. It is otherwise called as the Earth Summit, where they had agreed upon a document. All the countries had come out with a document, which is called as the Rio Declaration on Environment and Development. As per this document, there are 27 principles or guidelines for sustainable development. And one of them is that every country should have the right to development. That right has to be fulfilled so that they can equitably meet the developmental and the environmental needs of the present as well as, well as the future generations. So you cannot say that, okay, this country has not developed till now, but we can't do anything. We need to take care of environment. No. Both environment development as well as economic development is important for every country and every country is entitled to it basically. Especially in the least developed countries which are also environmentally vulnerable, we should be having a spirit of global partnership. Everybody has to 
put in their efforts to conserve to protect and restore the health of the earth's ecosystem this is these are some of the points that have been given for sustainable development in this rio declaration on environment and De development so pollution is one of the many environmental challenges that is there globally and it has a major impact in fact a very severe impact in developing countries because a lot of people are there so if one person falls ill due to pollution then it spreads rapidly so it causes ill health it causes a high mortality rate that is people die due to pollution now many processes are you know which are pollution intensive which cause a lot of pollution for example manufacturing of clothing or manufacturing of furniture is often exported by the rich countries to less developed nations so what happens is these less developed na nations just to improve their economy just to make more money because they are already you know not having much economic growth so to get economic growth to make more money what they do is they take up such companies but in the process they end up harming their environment so basically what's happening over here is there is outsourcing of pollution by the richer countries to the poorer nations and this leads to environmental degradation so what happens here is the developed countries have less en environmental degradation and you know there are more number of pollution indicators in less developed countries why because the richer countries or the developed nations have outsourced their activities to the poorer nations one example of this is where a lot of meat that is eaten by the european countries or in the european market is coming from brazil which is in south america so in brazil a lot of trees are being cut down for grazing because animals need to be grown then they have to be sold as meat to the european market so you can see over here one country is going down in their resources just for the purpose of another country now to have economic growth and protect the environment developing countries what they need is energy access at lower costs if this is provided if the developed nations you know they already have better technology and resources so if they share their resources if they share their technological know how with the other nations then that can reduce the consequences of global warming because the current population is the current pollution that is happening mainly is due to industrial development which the developed nations did in the past so they also have a responsibility to reduce the greenhouse emissions or to reduce the pollution in the future not only that the per capita consumption is much more in developed countries developed countries use much much more of the resources per head but what happens is in developing countries population is more so ultimately the numbers are equal but that is the reason why there has to be shared responsibility between the developed and developing countries when it comes to protecting the environment at the same time as having economic growth now there's also something called as a debt trap debt trap is where a new debt is added debt is like a loan so new debt is added in order to pay existing debt now this is a structure this is an incentive structure that is luring the individuals so that they accept long term debt obligations under conditions which are favoring the lender a very simple example is what has recently happened we have seen that sri lanka is under heavy debt trap why because it has borrowed heavily from different sources it has borrowed from world bank there are other sources as well such as indian international monetary fund so and sri lanka has also borrowed from chinese banks so due to this it is under a debt trap it is having too much of loans to pay it is having too much of debts to pay pay and it is not having any resources to make the payment so in 1990s there was severe debt crisis in the world one of the countries which faced such a crisis was mexico which declared that they cannot pay their international debt and then it slowly spread to the other countries as well so what often happens is developing countries borrow heavily from these sources like world bank or imf to feed their growing populations and then they are unable to return it back to return it back what they do is they'll quickly deplete their natural resources they'll start exporting their uh, uh, their wood their cotton their uh, the animal meat or any kind of resources they have they'll start exporting it to the developed countries just so that they can repay the debt so this is again one more big problem or one more big challenge in the path of economic growth economic growth is happening but at the same time we are harming the environment because of debt tra trap the next topic that we have is international trade so international trade refers to the exchange of goods or services or capital between countries and in the international trade we do have benefits as well as drawbacks benefits mainly are that it adds on to the global economy so trade is very good because it is that is why we have a global economy right now or the world 
production and consumption of a commodity is affected by trade for example there would be less amount of tea being grown tea leaves being grown if people were not able to get it so tea leaves being grown in india if only indians could drink it then we wouldn't grow so much tea but now we are growing so much of tea because we are able to export it to other countries so the world production and consume consumption is also affected by the trade not only that we are now working like a united world we are not countries are not working in isolation each country is having some kind of trade relations with the other country so these are some of the benefits that arise from international trade but every coin has two sides so there are drawbacks as well the first drawback is that it increases the gap between the rich and the poor countries because many a times the terms are not fair there is a lot of unfair trade that is happening often the countries get affected by the trends of the other countries for example recession if there is recession happening in us it is affecting our country's growth as well geographically it separates the production and consumption like i told you the example of the meat market from uh, brazil to europe so it is the production is happening in brazil but the consumption is happening in a totally different continent that is in europe so the environmental effects are happening in one country though the actual usage is happening in a different country so some of the corporations what they are doing is they are taking they are even taking the businesses to countries which have cheap labor and where there is weak environmental law so that is also one problem we'll look at it again in the next slide so what governments need to do is they need to regulate the Uh, policies they need to make sure that the environment degrading activities are you know uh, are regulated but it is very difficult for the policy makers because again they have to balance the economic growth and the environmental protection but this needs to be done otherwise these unfair trade practices these you know restrictions by the developed countries or these kind of activities by the developed countries will lead to environmental degradation especially in the developing countries those poorer countries which are which are ready to sell their resources for economic growth in such countries there will be a lot of problems there will be a lot of degradation and such kind of unfair trade practices need to be checked by the government and by the policy makers so there are different organizations like the world trade organization there is the world bank world fair trade organization these are all different organizations different outfits which are helping nations which are helping companies in these nations to have to establish a fair trade policy the last one is the role of multinational compan- companies which is also abbreviated as mnc now mnc is a com- is a company which is having facilities and assets in more than one country so whichever country they are starting from that is called as the home country and then wherever they establish their offices those are called as the host countries so an mnc needs to have at least 25% revenue from a different country for example infosys is, is a is an example of an mnc because it has been established in india it's an indian mnc but it does have many offices more than 50 offices in other countries so this mnc this multinational company concept is very important for globalization for maintaining international relations for you know boosting a country's economy you would have heard of so many other mncs like sony reebok Reliance, Birla, Tata. These are some of the Indian MNCs, or Ranbaxy, IBM. There are many, many different MNCs. More than forty thousand MNCs which are functioning in the world. Now they do contribute to development because they provide a lot of employment to people. They help to uh, better the infrastructure of a particular region. So the moment a company comes over there, the buildings get better, the roads get better, healthcare is better. So they do add on to the infrastructure of a particular area. they decrease the technological divide the technological gap between developed and developing countries so the developed countries are able to you know use the uh, uh, technological uh, expertise of people from a different country all because they are able to work in that particular region and it increases the investment in that particular country so basically we are talking about increasing the income and increasing the employment and economic growth so these are the contributions of mncs to development it does help many uh, mncs are from developed countries like us or western europe and japan and they are helping in development they are contributing to development of the african nations or of india and many other asian countries however they do have some sort of debatable contributions to the environment as well why debatable because there are a lot of people who say that no their contributions to economic growth are much bigger than the harm that they cause to the environment
so they do help the home country to acquire new materials they help the home country to get technology and expertise but what happens is often they end up harming the environment in a different country in the host country so the first reason is exploitation they are exploiting the workers the labor force as well as the local and local environment many a times they have you know got criticism for being profit centric profit centric what does profit centric mean profit centric motive means that they are only looking for profit they are not bothered about environment or the social welfare so for that many a times they have been criticized mncs have been criticized usually these mncs set up you know environmentally hazardous operations in countries which have minimal environment protection laws so in such countries they'll shift their uh, you know working operations because they know that there they can get it done easily they need not worry too much about the environment and lastly what happens is many have argued that they are you know they are causing a lot of unemployment as well that is because they are moving from moving these plants to areas with cheaper workforce cheaper labor so in many countries are losing out on their income on the employment these are some of their uh, you know you can say you you it's not like a contribution but these are some of the damages that they do cause to the environment in this regard let's talk about one of the mncs which caused a huge huge damage in the indian scenario that is the bhopal gas tragedy now this is a this is an example of one of the biggest industrial disasters that happened in india on 3rd december 1984 it happened in a place called bhopal which is in madhya pradesh and here the union carbide factory is where it happened at so it, it the uh, explosion happened at the union carbide factory now this is a pesticide plant it was a pesticide plant and from this factory a gas called as methyl isocyanate got leaked out more than 42 tons of the gas was leaked out because the entire plant exploded as you can see in the picture and this was immediately seen the effects of this was immediately seen in the people around more than 25000 people died immediately not only that there were a lot of other health effects as well due to inhalation of the toxic gases so it caused birth defects in children it caused eye irritation and eye problems it caused choking and respiratory difficulties in the people who survived and not only that it also contaminated the soil and water for a very large diameter so it caused a lot of health effects now why are we talking about this over here in with respect to mncs because there were a lot of factors for the leakage of this gas first one is that it was located in a very densely populated area so when the tank exploded many many people were affected secondly they had exported you know untested technology to the indian plant they did not test the technology properly they did not see whether it is secure enough there was no action plan to deal with incidents of this magnitude apart from that they have used methyl isocyanate i mean they have used very hazardous chemicals instead of you know lesser dangerous ones and they have stored it in large tanks instead of using several small tanks so once that large tank exploded the entire quantity of gas was leaked into the surroundings the safety checks were not done very frequently because there was staff staff shortage and the refrigeration of this methyl isocyanate gas was not done that refrigeration unit was disabled just so that they could save money so you can see over here there was such a poor maintenance the pipelines were corroded they did not do safety checks in place why is this important because an mnc came from a different country to india they set this up and then it caused a lot of trouble to the indian people so this is an example of how mncs many a times end up degrading the environment of the host country that is the other country this is one very very big example of such an action where an mnc did not take appropriate checks and they ended up degrading the environment of a totally different country not their own country so there have to be a lot of measures to regulate these mncs there has to be better regulation to prevent them from in, you know inflicting harm on the mankind not only that controlling activities of the mncs for so that you know you prevent them from assuming a role which can harm the interest of the developing countries they should not take over the developing countries entire growth it should not happen that we are depending completely on these mncs for our development and there has to be establishment of national and transnational institutions which can control these economic giants these are functioning in many different countries so we need to have regulations which are controlling their activities so that they don't take over any particular country 
I hope this review was useful to all of you. See you in the next one as well. Thank you.